From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. Thank you very much for coming back one more time to the Cannabis Podcast. Here we are at episode number 35, which will be the final episode for the year 2019. As we conclude another calendar year with another legalization milestone as of December 17th, edibles legal in our country, perhaps not terribly accessible, at least through the legal world, we will take a peek at what's available online at the moment for edibles in Canada. Also, my friend David Wiley, who I've mentioned a lot back at OkanaganZ.com, hinted a great summary of the top five cannabis stories from 2019, kind of centering here on the Okanagan. And chatted with David this morning. He's going to, uh, hopefully I'm going to get him back as another guest. Have a chat about his experience over the last year. But I'm going to take some information from his link on the top five stories of 2019. So we will share some of that with you. Also, we've got a final cultivar corner for the year coming up. We went back to Hobo. We picked up some Elation by Doja. That's in the vaporizer and all ready for a taste later. That and more is coming your way in episode 35 of the Cannabis Podcast. So, October 17th, 2019, edibles became legal in our country. Of course, on October 18th, there were no edibles available anywhere in the country, especially from a legal perspective. (laughs) Now, we all know, well, uh, certainly those who have any experience and spend any amount of time in the black market, there's lots of edibles available. There are places you can go to get edibles that are more highly dosed than the ones you're going to find on the legal market. So what I did as I was getting ready for the episode today, I just decided, well, let me just go online and see what I can find. So right now, as of this particular moment, at the BC Cannabis Stores, we're going to touch on four, they have, wow, four items that are available for you to purchase. On the other side of the country is the other place that I was able to locate some edibles that are currently available. And in Newfoundland, there are now about 20 options. In fact, there might even be more because they've got two pages of them. Yeah, so 20 plus. Looks like they got about 30 items that are available in Newfoundland. So we'll touch on some of those. Let's look at what's available, first of all, in BC. Since those became available, interestingly enough, like I think about two days ago. It didn't hit on the 17th. They were now available, I think, on the 19th of December. So as we talked about, the new Health Canada regulations, we're talking about one milligram per edible and 10 milligrams per package. So I find it interesting, first of all, that the very first page I bring up has edibles that are up to 0.2 milligrams in each individual item. Now, they have kept the maximum 10 milligrams per package. So on the BC Cannabis stores, you can get sea salt and caramel milk chocolate blend. That's from Aurora, and each individual piece there is 1.7 to 2 milligrams of THC, and minimal amounts typically of CBD, I think 0.5 milligrams. You can also get soft-baked chocolate cookies. Those are from Aurora. In fact, it looks like, no, it doesn't look like, every single item that is on the BC Cannabis store from an edible, as of this day, is all from Aurora, Aurora Drift, which I guess is their edible line. You can also get... Cocoa Dark Chocolate Blend, which is 64% cocoa, and Spearmint Chillers. So on BC Cannabis right now, if you're looking for edibles, you can get a cookie, a chocolate, or some mints. And those are basically your options. I also tried to find information in Ontario at the Ontario of the OCS. Nothing available currently at the moment. In Alberta, of course, it's all private retailers, so I couldn't find a local or a government outlet that was going to show me what edibles were available. And I haven't heard whether or not, and actually the pieces I have had heard is that the edibles are not yet available in Alberta. Saskatchewan, again, I tried to find a a site that was going to give me an indication of that, but I had trouble locating that. So I apologize if there are pieces of that that are available now. Manitoba couldn't find anything. Quebec, that's not a surprise. Couldn't find anything. And in uh, the other maritime provinces, maybe out there as well. These are the ones that I was able to dig up today. So we've talked about BC Cannabis stores. Let's go to the other side of the country and find out what 
Newfoundland has available for us in terms of edibles. And I'm going to go to the first page of the results because that's where most of the good stuff is. And this gives you a sense of what they have. And first of all, I guess the first thing that I find is that uh, they have a bit better of a selection, meaning there's more companies involved in producing edibles in Newfoundland. The primary company right now is uh, Foray, Tweed, and Colab. So in Newfoundland, if you want to pick up some edibles, well, you've got some Colab Apple Green Tea, which are in soft chews. It's a two-pack. Now, here you go. This is what I was expecting to see. THC, one milligram per piece. CBD, five milligrams per piece. So that's an interesting item on the Apple Green Tea soft gels. $4 a piece. And you get two pieces for $7.99. So there you go. Your package is going to be just two milligrams and one milligram per piece. I still don't get it. <laughs> now, maybe part of the issue we have with edibles is that what we've been looking at, and I've seen some discussion about this as well, that when we talk about edibles in the black market and differing stories about whether or not people get a certain buzz off of particular milligrams. Now, two issues with that, of course, there is the fact that it is 11-hydroxy-THC, so it's a different effect than delta-9-THC. But the other piece that many are talking about is that were we truly getting the dosages that were promised on our packaging when we're buying edibles in the black market? Because you'd have somebody, you know, gets a 25 or a 50 milligram piece and gets no buzz out of it. Well, as they come along and try one of these one milligram pieces <laughs> from the legal side of things, they're probably not going to get much of a buzz out of that as well. Let's carry on and see what else we have in Newfoundland. We have 4A Vanilla Chai Chocolate Square. Now, interestingly enough, this has 10 milligrams per piece. Uh, how, how was that possible? <laughs> I'm seeing so many discrepancies as, as we move along through this. So this is from Foray. This is Vanilla Chai Chocolate Square. It's one piece, a single piece in the package. Okay, that's how they're doing it, I guess, because it is the package itself. The package has 10 milligrams, so 10 milligrams per piece. And by the way, 15 grams uh, of dried flour, or sorry, 15 grams, and this is the other thing we have to start getting used to, is the ratio of edibles to what our dried flour is because it affects how much you can carry. So 15 grams of edible is equivalent to one gram of dried flour. So here, this 10 milligram piece is not even quite yet to that one gram of dried flour. And this is $5.99 for this one pack or this one piece which is 10 milligrams in a uh, vanilla chai chocolate square. So when I look at the others, there's not a whole lot more. It looks like we've got some soft gels. We've got some caramel. We've got some more chocolates. We've got another chocolate bar, which I guess makes sense. I've heard a lot of people when, when I was working at the store that would come in looking for edibles, and a lot of people were looking for some chocolates. It's a very popular item in the world. So I guess I'm not surprised to see the initial entry into our world is showing chocolate in a lot of different spaces. And that's clearly evident in what I'm seeing today, looking at both the BC cannabis stores and the Newfoundland government's outlet for online sales. Well, do you think it's going to be as big of a bang as everybody's been expecting? I mean, we've already seen some issues right across our country with getting the flour out <laughs> and doing so in a timely fashion. And allowing access to it, because, again, here we are in the Okanagan, and there's still only one store that's open, here in Kelowna anyways. I, I, I'm still of a differing opinion. I'm looking to, into 2020 and thinking there's going to be a few events that may occur that are going to be a spark to whether or not this whole edible thing is going to work. I've heard some discussion of some manipulation or some experimentation that's not out there of ways of getting the time to effect for edibles down to 15 minutes instead of the 30 minutes to 90 minutes that we find when we ingest it. That would be a very positive thing because if we can get that time to effect down to a more reasonable time, it's going to be a lot easier to dosage. There will be less opportunities for green out when one consumes a little too much edibles and gets that THC overload. So that would be a good thing if we start to look at that. And again, as more and more of this product comes out, I know a lot of people are, are eager to get the uh, beverages, the THC-infused beverages, 
kind of trying to replace their beer, I suppose. I'm, I'm not so sure. We'll see. I, I, I don't have a real thirst for the beverages, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe I'll take my first one and think, ooh, that was really good and had a really good effect. So I'm still on the fence. I'm still on the fence about edibles, but I know that they are huge. I know that there's a lot of people who have been itching to get them, and there's probably a lot of people who have already gone to BC Cannabis stores and the other online places and ordered themselves some edibles so that when the new year comes, they can be one of the first to try it. That's the situation in Canada as we look right now with Edibles and Cannabis 2.0. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Go to the corner, go to the corner, oh yeah. Go to the corner, please explain this stuff to me. Again, a thrill to be here for another Cultivar Corner. This will be our last Cultivar Corner of this year, as, of course, 2019 is quickly winding down. We're recording this episode on the Friday before Christmas, a bit of a wake-and-bake on a Friday. And uh, what I may find, since the strain we're dealing with is an indica, that may also mean that I'm having a bit of a nap on late Friday afternoon. (laughs) Sorry about that. I just kicked the microphone. That sometimes happens when we do wake-and-bake a little too early, especially with indicas and see where we go from there. But what are we looking at today? Well, we went back to Hobo, which of course is the only legal store available to us here in the city of Kelowna. Still waiting for more to open. We'll talk about much more about that as we move into the next year. So we went to Hobo, and what I was looking for was something a little different. I wanted some, a lot of myrcene. I wanted a good indica, because to finish my day, I always like going into the indicas and getting that nice, real relaxing buzz. And I know from my perspective, it's usually myrcene that has to be one of the terpenes that's associated to that. So what have we got here? We are looking at Doja Elation. Now, Doja is a product of Tweed out of Smith Falls, Ontario. Don't know which particular greenhouse this batch was done in. The information I'm pulling up, I'm getting from leafly.ca. Doja is a hybrid between MK Ultra and ChemDog 91. It's a potent indica dominant strain which received second place at the 2010 High Times Cannabis Cup in the indica category. Piney and sour, it's reported to have relaxing and uplifting effects. Well, there's definitely some pine there. And yet still a bit of that earthiness from the mirror scene. So the terpenes that are indicated in Elation by Doja, mirror scene, which you also find, of course, in wild thyme, parsley, and hops, osamine, which is in mangoes, mint, and lavender, and caryophyllene, which is in rosemary, basil, and black pepper. So those are the primary terpenes in doja elation. Not a surprise to me, because I've mentioned before that I found that the indicas that truly affect me the most are ones that have a significant amount of myrcene in it. So in order to get started here, let me get the uh, vaporizer on. While that warms up, let me fire up the joint and see what we have as the end result with Doja Elation. A good start for a Wake and Bake Friday. The Wake and Bake Friday just before Christmas. Most of our family coming back for Christmas this year. Got both of my sons and their lovely wives and our granddaughters coming home for Christmas. It's going to be a fun Christmas around the Cannabis Podcast home. Looking forward to that. Also looking forward to see what the effect here is with Doja Elation. Getting a bit of the piney taste. A bit of the earthiness from the mirror scene. Mm. Very tasty. Now let me give you the details on this particular batch. And I say that because I'm already starting to get my happy eyes. So this was packaged and we are getting better. I also have to, since I have spent a good deal of time over the last year talking about the legal market and how bad and dry much of the product that I was getting was, I also have to hit the other side of this. Uh, Things are getting much better. This particular one was packaged on October 19th of 2019, no, October 11th, sorry. So it's just a little over two months old, still has lots of freshness, really nice big buds. They're well trimmed. They're not as dry as things were for so long, where things were just 
You can literally just squeeze it and it turns to dust in your hand. This is pretty close to dust, but it's still there where you do need a bit of exercise from your fingers to get that last little bit going. Oh, oh, I like the taste of that. So as we smoke the joint, white ash coming off the, the bottom of that. No, not a lot of darkness there. No harshness. Don't taste any chemicals in that. And I think then I should be darn close to having the vaporizer ready to go to. So the effect so far, this is an indica. So I am expecting to get some body relaxation and I'm feeling that some of that in my shoulders now. In fact, feeling a little less of the arthritis in my hands after having a little toke of that too, which is also a nice bonus to any cannabis one happens to imbibe. And apparently I shut off my vaporizer. <laughs> Come on. I'm stoned. It gives me an opportunity to do things like that. It may not make sense when you're not stoned. Not true. Not true. Well, okay, there's a bit of truth to that. It's almost there. And I want to get a taste of this. And there it is. The double bang for the mighty being ready to go. And the taste of elation by Doja. You get so much more taste through the vaporizer than through a joint. I keep forgetting about that. I've, I've of late been just getting lazy and rolling a lot of joints. And I have to remember that if I really want the taste to get back to the vaporizer and be a little easier on my lungs as well. You can taste that earthiness of the myrcene. You can tell the myrcene is the predominant terpene in this. I don't have the percentages on what's coming out of Leafly. Uh, osamine as well, and then karyophyllene. So you're getting a bit of the peppery. Mm. Oh, it tastes so much better in the vaporizer. <laughs> So much better. So I picked this up because, of course, we got family coming home for Christmas and we'll be gathered around the dining room table and around the living room playing games and such. And I thought, well, I want good indica that's going to give me some buzz, get a little high, but kind of ease off into that night. And perhaps I'll let you know uh, when we finish this episode whether it also ended up with me being in a nap situation on a Friday afternoon. I'm not opposed to napping, never have been. And with the right indication or the right motivation of the right cannabis, uh, naps are pretty uh, fine and dandy in the afternoon. So we'll find out about that. I am feeding my happy eyes. So I'm getting that euphoria, that initial euphoria. It's moving into a nice, oh, nice body relaxation. Just feeding the muscles ease a little bit. Relaxation take on. And I'm feeling now would be a fabulous time to pull up a game or listen to some music or watch a movie or maybe even record the rest of a podcast. Who knows? Whatever activity you have in store over the holiday season, if you're looking for something to give you a real nice relaxation, have a really nice taste associated to it. Use it in your vaporizer and there'll be very little odor as well. But I'm kind of happy so far with what I have found with Elation by Doja. <sighs> yeah. I like the taste and the feel of that one. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. This is the Cannabis Podcast. And one of the other things that I wanted to chat about today was a story from my friend David Wiley and the folks at the Okanagan Sea. Lots of good reporting that's come out of David and his crew over the last year. They started just on legalization day last year. It's a great resource for information. And David has done a summary review on the first full year of legal cannabis. It's nearly over. And they're reflecting on five major stories that will shape the cannabis discussion in the coming year and beyond. More brick and mortar. Cannabis stores are spreading throughout the Okanagan and BC, although at an incredibly glacial pace. There are now 25 licensed private cannabis stores in the Okanagan, as well as four government stores. Really? <laughs> I'm not questioning your sources, David. I'm just trying to figure out where those 25 cannabis stores would be in the Okanagan, unless you're extending the Okanagan to include the Shushwap, the North and South Okanagan, and all of those. Oh, there's the qualifier. I should have read the, uh, completed the sentence. <laughs> Though not all have opened yet. <laughs> Province-wide, nearly 200 stores are now licensed, and again, I would add, but are not yet open. As retail cannabis expands in the valley, we're seeing job creation and hiring fairs. I know BC Cannabis Stores looking at opening a store 
um, in one of the local towns. Can't remember which one it was. They did a hiring fair for that. So the folks at Okanagan Sea have done a count for us, and I guess here's where our 25 come from. Eight in Vernon. Again, not necessarily all open, but all have been licensed to this point. One in Enderby, two in Kelowna. Now, again, we know Hobo is the one that's open, and the one that is still waiting for... Uh, what the heck was the name of that one? It's... Uh, Oh, Chiba Chibas. Chibas Chibas has their license, but not yet open. There is one in Lake Country, that's the Starbuds, two in Oliver, two in Asuyas, six in Penticton, and four in West Kelowna. And again, emphasize that four licenses have been, have been granted, but not four stores are yet open. Investors were clobbered. The cannabis bubble burst this year, with investors losing significant value in their portfolios. Canada's biggest cannabis company, Canopy Growth, hit a high this year of more than $60 a share. However, it's closing out 2019 at about $26 a share. And Canopy isn't alone in its plunge either. Kelowna based flour had a high of about $8 this year, but will close way down at about $2. Bucks. Afria tumbled $14 to $6, and Aurora fell from $12 to $3. Cannabis stocks in 2019 could be summed up in one word. Ouch. <laughs> and then the next part of this article, Indigenous Questions. There's been confusion over the legality of dispensaries doing business on First Nations land without a provincial license selling unregulated cannabis products. Now, in the Okanagan, a lot of attention has been focused on Indigenous bloom in Lake Country. And so far, it seems there's been no provincial enforcement at the store, though the provincial government has been cracking down across B.C., there are numerous stores along the Green Mile on the West Side Road. We've never really talked about that, but that is exactly what it's referred to. I think there's about five that are on the West Side Road that are open. This year, the Okanagan Indian Band, which owns the land where Indigenous Bloom and other stores operate, passed a moratorium on cannabis stores. However, it seemingly hasn't had any effect on the stores that are already open. During a national conference in Kelowna this year, focused on Indigenous cannabis opportunities, the co-founder of Nations Cannabis encouraged First Nations companies to go the legal route. Revelstoke Raid. I remember this story well because we spoke to Anna Mitten here on the Cannabis Podcast. It was a national headline that hit perhaps a little too close to home, centered around the seizure of three homegrown cannabis plants in Revelstoke. The couple affected, Anna Minton and Emmanuel Levesque Dupere, had their home raided by RCMP. The officers executed a search warrant granted after the plants were spotted by an off-duty officer during a public charity garden tour days earlier. Police came along, cut down the plants, and took them. Minton was surprised to learn that cannabis plants need to be completely hidden from public view and responded by saying, Why they didn't come to tell us we had crossed a line of the new laws and to be more cautious, I don't know. Which led to many others, including OZ staff, feeling anxious about their own plants and frustrated at the limitations of the laws about growing your own. It did not deter the cannabis podcast from continuing on to grow our cannabis. As you know that we had our harvests and looking forward to more next year as well. And number five on the Okanagan Z's top five for 2019, Cannabis 2.0 Arise, which we've already touched on a little bit. Interest has been growing for edibles, topicals, extracts, and other Cannabis 2.0 products since legalization last year. As with everything in this industry, though, it has been a bit of a waiting game. And this one is about over with the release of products staggered in waves. Availability varies from province to province. Do not expect to see much before the end of the year. As we've already indicated, there are a few available online in BC and Newfoundland, at least. Canopy Growth plans to release drinks and chocolates first, followed by vape pens, and cartridges over the course of the first few weeks of 2020. The national rollout will likely follow a similar pattern. We did see the first handful of Cannabis Two Point products drop this week in BC, and you can find out more about that on the link that I have supplied for you too. And this is a link that I will put, of course, back on CannabisPodcast.com. You can check out this link to my friends at the Okanagan Z. And we're going to have David on in the next couple of weeks, get him back for another visit and see how things have progressed with the Okanagan Z in 2019 and as we move into 2020. David and I haven't gotten together for a little while. It's time for us to get together and share a toke 
and some stories about our life in the cannabis world, <laughs> because that's what it's all about, right? And that's a look at the top five stories of 2019, thanks to my friends David Wiley and his crew at theokanaganz.com. And that, ladies and gentlemen, just about wraps up what we've got for you for episode 35. Looking forward to a bit of time as we head into the holidays. As I mentioned, we've got family coming home. Looking forward to sharing some time with both of my sons and their wives. Our world is expanding and really looking forward to spending some time with our granddaughter as well. It's a cool time. The only one who can't come home is our daughter from Australia. Sarah, we wish you could be here with us, uh, but unfortunately she can't. Uh, her and her new husband are busy with their own life down in Australia, and it's not quite an easy and quick little trip to make a trip up here to the Okanagan. So thank you for being along for episode 35. If you have any ideas, and I appreciate some of the content we have had with some suggestions for people to talk with, I have an interview being suggested by somebody. We'll see if that progresses a little bit. If you know of anybody you think should be on the Cannabis Podcast or any topics you think that I should talk about, send me a note, info at CannabisPodcast.com. I hope you have an opportunity to enjoy time with your family and friends over the holiday season, and we will likely talk to you again when we hit the new year. That's it for episode 35 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Are you looking for the next great cannabis business to invest in? Then you need to check out the MJ Bulls podcast. Hi, I'm Dan Humston. Join me each week as I speak to both cannabis entrepreneurs who are raising capital and cannabis investors who are investing capital. Our 10-minute episodes are perfect for the busy investor. Start listening to the MJ Bulls podcast today, wherever you listen to podcasts, and who knows, maybe you'll discover the next cannabis unicorn.